Suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. Did you know that the Stanley Steamer is the fastest automobile ever made? It is. Theoretically, at least. Nobody ever determined its top speed because it had a tendency to blow up first. All of which is by way of background for the upcoming story of suspense. Listen. Listen, then. As Mr. John McIntyre stars in The Big Day, which begins one minute from now. I have never read a collection of American folklore which had a section devoted solely to the downtrodden commuter. But there should be. There are legends galore about the miseries of these poor folk. For example, there was this train in Idaho that was a mite slow. Once an impatient passenger asked the conductor why the train had stopped. There's a cow on the track, he said. We have to chase her away. A little later, when the train stopped again, the passenger roared, Now what's wrong? Oh, said the conductor serenely, we just caught up with that cow again. <laughs> Folklore belongs to every nation's legendary past, and I guess we Americans have our share of some good ones. Like the one about... Ah, <laughs> but we'll have to save that one for the next time we travel your way. See you then. And now... Mr. John McIntyre in The Big Day. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. What's the say on the gauge, Albert? Looks like about four pounds, Sam, maybe four and a half. Not enough. She won't run on four and a half pounds of steam pressure, that's for sure. Can't see what difference it would make if she did run, Sam. You wouldn't take her anywhere. Just sit here in the garage like you've been doing every day since I can remember and steam her up and not go anywhere. Now, how come you just steam her up and don't go anywhere in her, Sam? Because the right time hasn't come along yet. That's why, Albert. And you put new wheels on her and new racing tires. And you made me paint that crazy number 61 on the side, but you never take her out. Albert, I'm getting tired of you sitting there asking me why I never do this and why I never do that. Now, I'm going to tell you once more what I've been telling you over and over. I put the new wheels and tires on her because I'll need them when the right time gets here. And it's coming, Albert. It's coming sooner than you think. Are you going to ride her up to heaven on Judgment Day, Sam? Are you going to steam her up and drive your bright red Stanley up into the sky? Is that what you're going to do, Sam? That's very funny, Albert. Very funny. No, I'm not going to drive her up to heaven on Judgment Day. I'm going to drive her where she belongs, out in the open. Out on the road where she can get up a full head of steam and show everybody what she can really do. Going to show up all the modern cars, eh, Sam? Albert... I know I'm wasting my time talking to you, just like I waste my time talking to that son of mine. But 50 years ago, 50 years ago, in 1907, a Stanley steamer was wrecked going 190 miles an hour. Oh, now, come off it, Sam. It's in the book, 190 miles an hour, and she would have done better if she hadn't come apart. I'll bet the fellow that was driving her came apart, too. Well, it wasn't the car's fault. The fellow that was driving her just didn't know how to handle steam. But you do. I do. When the day gets here, I'll show you. You and Ma and that son of mine and everyone else who think gasoline is the only kind of fuel for a car. The only reason the steamer isn't on the streets now is because the big oil companies bought them out, bought them out to keep the steamer off the streets. But it'll be different when I take this one out. Oh, sure. And the time is sooner than you think, Albert. A lot sooner than you think. Now get up there and pump, Albert. Let's get a real head of steam on her and see what she sounds like. <laughs> Just a moment, it'll be time for the 5.30 news. But first, here's a word from our sponsor. Friends, how long has it been since you felt good? Junior? Really good, I Junior? Think. Yes, Mom? Well, Where's Pop? Pop? The news is coming on, and he wants to hear the qualifying times from the racetrack. I'll call him. I think he and Mr. Fellows are out in the garage. Well, tell him the news is on. He'll be mad if he misses it. Well, there he is, Mom, coming in the back door. Ah, news on yet? Yeah, I was just going to call you. Did you get to the speed trials at Indianapolis yet? No, they haven't finished the important news yet. Important? What's more important, I'd like to know, than the names and times of the drivers who qualified for the Indianapolis 500 this week? Well, why in the world are you so interested in the races this year, Sam? I've always been interested in the Memorial Day race, and you know it. But why the interest in the times and what kind of cars they're driving and all that? You always listen to the race on race day, but... 
Well, this year you act like you're driving in it yourself. Huh. In a steamer, maybe. Huh. And what's so funny about that? She could take any one of those gasoline engine cars, make them look like they were standing still. Oh, come on, Pop. That Stanley of yours was made in 1917. Just because you put a lot of new stuff on her, like racing tires and modern wheels, well, putting her on a track with a modern race car would be like putting a workhorse against Iron Leeds at the Derby. Son, let me ask you something. Sure. How old are you? Seventeen. And how long have you been driving a car? Three years. Legally? Mm, almost a year. All right. Now, I've been driving cars almost as long as they've had them. And I happen to know a little more about the Stanley Steamer than you do. And I know a little more about gas engines than you do. Son, don't you talk back to your father. Well, I'm not talking back to him, Mom. I just said that... Your mom heard what you said, son, and I can tell you this. If I could get that steamer of mine out where it could get a good start, I could whip any one of those fancy streamline jobs they got back at Indianapolis. Oh, boy. Sam. I could whip any one of them, and I could make them eat my steam. Sam, sometimes yeah. I wonder where your mind is. Yeah. Now, s stop arguing about something that's impossible yeah. and listen to the news while I get dinner on It's not impossible, and one of these days I'll show you it's not impossible. Big deal. Maybe that day is sooner than you think. What do you say to that? Well, I say you either sit down and listen to the news or go in and clean up for supper. That's what I say. And I say the Stanley Steamer's the fastest thing on wheels. That's what I say. Anybody want to know what I say? No. That's what I thought you'd say. <laughs> Bring the extension cord around the front of her, Albert. Hang it over on the nail. I'm trying to get it over the hood, Sam. But don't drag it across her. You want to scratch up the paint? I don't want to do anything but go home, Sam. Millie's going to give me a bad time if I don't get home early. She thinks you're down at the church again tonight? Well, I told her I was painting the white lines on the basketball court. Trouble is, I told her I was doing that last night, too. Well, tell her it's a big court. Mm -hmm. Hold that light over here so as we can get a look at these maps. Uh -huh. Yeah, you sure got enough of them. Yeah, got them down at the auto club. Real nice about giving them to me, too. Didn't even ask me what I wanted them for. Well, what do you want them for, Sam? What do I want them for? I want them to lay out a course. A course of what? Albert, when you lay out a course, it isn't a course of something. It's a course to somewhere. Oh, where? Well, that's what we're going to figure out tonight. Hold the light over this way a bit. Let's take a look at this map here. California, San Diego to San Francisco. That's the one we want. Well, this is Los Angeles, Sam. <laughs> I know. That. Well, let's see. Highway 101 runs from here to San Diego. Uh, too many little towns. Not far enough, anyway. Millie has an aunt lives down in San Diego. Highway She's 99. If you went straight up 99 towards Sacramento, you'd bypass Saugus, New Hall... And you don't hit anything really big until Bakersfield. I had a friend once lived in Bakersfield. And out of Bakersfield, there's Wasco, Delano, Tulare, Fresno. And the road runs straight and level. Hand me that uh, ruler there, will you, Elmer? Yeah. Here it is. Yeah. Now, let's see. The scale says 21 miles to the inch. Hmm. Fresno's about 10 inches from Los Angeles. That's... 210 miles. Mm -hmm. well, got a long ways to go yet. Jim, I, I, I don't know what you're going to do with that map, but I got to go home. If Millie finds out I've been spending my evenings over here in your garage fooling around with this steamer of yours, she'll skin me alive. Albert, let me tell you something. You got nothing to worry about. Oh, I got nothing to worry about with Millie? You got nothing to worry about with Millie when she finds out why you've been spending your evenings over here. When she finds out. When she finds out why you've been helping me with the steamer, she'll be so impressed she won't do anything but applaud. Sam, I got to go home. All right, Albert, you go on home. You go home and get a good night's sleep, and tomorrow morning I'll let you in on a little surprise. Sam, you've forgotten that tomorrow's Memorial Day or the race is on. I know the race is on, Albert. I know that you and I always listen to the Indianapolis race on the radio, and tomorrow we listen to the start just like we always have. Only it'll be different. Different? That's right, Albert, different. That's the surprise I'm talking about. Now, you'll be here at 8.30, sharp. 8.30? The radio doesn't even come on from the track until 9.15. You'll be here at 8.30 sharp, Albert. Well, I don't know why I've got to get here so early. Albert. All right, Sam, if you say so. 
I'll be here. Ah, that's the way to talk, Elbert. Now, you go on home to Millie and leave me here with my maps, and I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Well, good night, Sam. Good night, Elbert. Don't be late, because tomorrow, tomorrow, Elbert, is the big day. Fair with sunny skies and warm, clear evenings. Stay tuned to this station for the started running of the Great Memorial Day Speed Classic. But well, where on earth is your pop, Junior? I don't know, Mom. Well, I guess this is one day I don't have to worry about where he is. He and Elbert haven't missed the start of the Annapolis race for 15 years. That's Indianapolis, Mom. Annapolis is the Naval Academy. You know, I never can remember which is which. I tried last year to remember that the Indians were the ones at the racetrack and the sailors at the other place, but it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, I remember. You called it the Indian race from Annapolis. <laughs> yes, your pop almost exploded. Like that tin can of his in the garage. <laughs> Don't you ever let your father hear you call that car of his a tin can. It's a Stanley steamer, and you know that as well as I do. It's a tin can, if you ask me. And I could beat it in low gear in my old jalopy. Pop would ever take it out on the road. We take you now to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in Indianapolis, Indiana, for the start of the great Memorial Day Speed Classic, the Indianapolis 500-mile race. Hello there, race fans. This is Sam Pierce, speaking directly from the pagoda, overlooking the starting line here at Indianapolis. And it's a beautiful day for a race. There are a few black clouds over Junior, the Junior, you better it's call your here. pop. He'll, he'll explode if he misses the start. Like classic. a tin can? Junior? <laughs> Open the doors, Albert. Open the doors and stand back. Are you going to take it out, Sam? Just open the doors and see. Okay, Sam. Well, open, Sam. Okay. Now stand back, Albert. There she goes. She's moving, Sam. She's I moving. I know, I know. I'll bring that portable radio. Follow me out to the street and I'll stop her there. Okay, Sam. You did it, Sam. You took her out. Of course I did, Albert. Now hand me that radio. Yeah, here you are. I'll tune her up and see if they've got the track yet. On the track, running their warm-up lap. The race car is leaving the pits now, and in a very short time, the race will be underway. They're just about ready to go, Albert. Yeah, we better get into the house or we'll miss the start. Albert, we're not going to listen to the start in the house. Huh? We're going to listen to the start right here on this corner. Well, we can hear it better in the house, Sam. Albert, get up here on the seat with me. Me? Up there on that seat in that thing? That's right, Albert. Get here on the seat with me. I wouldn't drive around the block in that thing, Sam, and you know it. Albert, you're going with me. I am not going with you. You're going with me or I'll tell Billy that you weren't at the church last night or the night before or the night before that. Now get up here on the seat and turn up the radio so we can hear the start. Uh, I, I don't like this, Sam. Yeah, you will, Albert. Yeah. You're going to share an historic event with me. You're going to be with me and my Stanley steamer when the starter at the track drops the starting flag in front of those racers back at Indianapolis. And when that flag drops, Elbert, we're going to open the throttle and start with them. Sam Porter, are you crazy? And while they're driving around and around for 500 miles, you and I and the steamer will be going up Highway 99 to the town of Gridley. Sam! And Gridley, California is exactly 500 miles from where we are right now. You're going to race this thing 500 miles to Gridley? We're going to race against those cars back at Indianapolis. And we're going to win, Elbert. We're going to get to Gridley before they get to the finish line. Sam Porty, you're crazy. Sitting up on this steaming monster talking like a crazy man. Turn up the radio, Elbert. And here they come down the straightaway in front of the main grandstands, ladies and gentlemen. And they're off. The Indianapolis. Hang on and pump, uh, Elbert. Hang on and pump. Is underway. We're off to Gridley. In a moment... We continue with Suspense. Do you know the Social Security benefits to which you will be entitled when you separate from the service and take a civilian job? Here's a tip from Social Security. There are four times for action. First, when you go on a job covered by Social Security, you need a Social Security card. The account number shown on the card is used to keep a record of your earnings. Second... If a worker in your family dies and his work was covered by Social Security, some member of the family should ask about survivor's benefits at the nearest Social Security office. Third, if you're disabled before you reach 65, 
and have worked under Social Security, get in touch with the Social Security office. You and your dependents may be eligible for monthly checks. And finally, two or three months before you reach retirement age, get in touch with the Social Security office. If you want to keep working, fine. But get the facts about Social Security anyway. You may still be able to get benefit payments. And now, we continue with The Big Day, starring Mr. John McIntyre. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. We're in the tenth lap of the race, ladies and gentlemen, and now here are the standings. In first place, car number 31, Johnny Gillen. In second, in car number 26, George O'Hara. How fast we go, Albert? I, I can't see the speedometer, Sam. Too much steam. Well, wipe off your goggles and bend down closer. I want to know how fast we're going. Roy Ruffman. In six I think the speedometer is busted, Sam. It says 95. That's not busted, Albert. We're probably going 95. Now get on that pump, Albert, and let's see if we can't get up a real head of So far, it's been a wonderful race, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing to mar the thrill of watching I these cars. I can't understand. Fifteen years, he never misses a start, and now, all of a sudden, he disappears. I called him, Mom, but he didn't answer. Well, maybe he didn't hear you. Go on out the garage and get him. Okay, Mom. And it all goes well. We interrupt the Indianapolis race for a moment to bring you a special announcement from the California Highway Patrol. This is Officer Hanson of the Highway Patrol speaking. We have just received a report that an unidentified object has been seen traveling north on Highway 99 at very high speed. We have no description other than the following. The object is bright red and seems to be emitting clouds of some vapor, perhaps steam. Oh, no. It was last seen heading north on Highway 99 in the vicinity of Caswell and was traveling at great speed. Oh. A sheriff's car that gave chase lost it and called in this report. Motorists are warned to be on the lookout and to give this object the right of way if they see it. All police and sheriff's cars are on the alert and will bring you further reports as we receive them. Oh, dear me, no. Now to the Indianapolis. Junior! Speedway. Junior! Pop's not in the garage, Mom, and you know what? I'm afraid I do, Steamer isn't there either. Junior, I know where your father is. He's out on the highway and that... Uh, tin can? Tin can, and he's trying to kill himself. Get me the phone, Junior. I've got to let them know. <laughs> Police Department, Sergeant Walsh speaking. Yes? Yes? No, now, wait a minute. Let me get this straight here. You say you know what the bright red object is. Now, what bright red object? The one that's out on Highway 99. The one that's going so fast. Oh, that one. Well, why didn't you say so? Now, hold on a minute. I want to get this down. Charlie. Get the radio open and stand by for an all-points bulletin. There's a lady on the phone says she knows what that crazy thing is on 99. Okay, lady. Now you tell me just what it is. That's right. A what? A Stanley steamer? Where are we now, Elbert? I think we're coming up to Bakersfield. It's hard to follow the map with the steam and the wind. Bakersfield? That's over 100 miles from L.A. Turn up the radio, Elbert. We'll see how far they've gone at Indianapolis. And these cars are performing like the beautiful things they are. Ha! So far, we haven't lost a car. We've completed a little over 100 laps. 250 miles. Somebody's crazy. Well, it isn't him, Sam. Now, as you know, ladies and gentlemen, at the halfway mark, we always give the standings of the cars and their drivers. So, now let's just take it. A... Uh-oh, wait, wait a minute, ladies and gentlemen. The yellow warning lights are on, and that means we've got a car in trouble somewhere. I can't see too well, but I think it's... Yes, yes, there it is. Down at the far end of the grandstand straightaway, there's a car against the retaining wall. It's a wreck, Sam. Shut up and pump. Yeah, I can see the driver, ladies and gentlemen. He's out of the car now, and he's waving that he's all right. He's... Yes, he's okay, ladies and gentlemen, but that car is in a bad place there. He'll have to keep this race running under the caution flag until they can clear it away. Of course, that means the cars will have to slow way down, and this will reduce the race average, but, well, that's the break to the game. No Come on, Albert. That's a break that's for us. News. Pump up some more steam there, and we'll make up some time on it. Sam, this has gone far enough. Now, you got through that last town all right, although I think you scared them all half to death. But this next town is Merced, and it's a big one. Now, they've got signals set for 30 miles an hour right through the main street. 
You can't go through, Mayor said, at 95 miles an hour. I figured on those signals, Elbert. We won't go through town at 95. Well, thank goodness for that. Signal set for 30. Three times 30 is 90. We'll go through town at 90. Flick of the whistle. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Now get on that pump, Elbert, and pump. We can't afford to lose any steam pressure at this point. We've got an average to hold. <laughs> This is a special bulletin from the State Highway Patrol. The unidentified object that has been reported at various positions from Los Angeles all the way north to Merced has been identified as a bright red Stanley steamer. Police in Fresno were eluded when a roadblock they set up was bypassed unexpectedly. However, the California Highway Patrol are now setting an impassable block on Highway 99 south of Stockton, and it's expected that the fugitives will be apprehended any minute. Meanwhile, motorists using this stretch of road are urged to proceed with caution. This has been a special bulletin. Ah, she's really rolling now that we got that fresh tank of water. She is that, Sam. It took us a little out of our way, taking that alternate road up into the hills back of Stockton. But I figured we'd find a water tank back there easier than in the city. And that farmer was real nice, too. You going back into Stockton now, Sam? Nope. Figured away on the map while we were stopped up there that takes us right around her. Figured it won't take much longer and we can miss the traffic in the city. You're pretty smart, Sam. Yeah, you gotta be smart to race a steamer, Elbert. Turn up the radio, see how they're doing in Indianapolis. Batteries are getting off a week, but I'll try. And now that the yellow lights are off, the cars are picking up their speed and the race is really a race again. You know, this is the longest period of time that the cars have ever had to run under the caution lights. Due, of course, to the unfortunate fact that a second car ran into the truck that was clearing the wreckage of the first car, and it's taken them a long, long time to get the remains off the track. But no one was hurt, so we're off again at Indianapolis. Turn it off, Elbert. We have to save the batteries. There's not much left in them now. You know something, Elbert? What? I'm kind of glad those races are running on the green flag again. I didn't feel right having the advantage over them all that time. Sam, you're crazy. You are plain crazy. But you know, I'm beginning to like this. This is the State Highway Patrol speaking. We have a new report on the runaway Stanley steamer. For a while, it was thought to have mysteriously disappeared when officers waiting at a roadblock at Stockton reported it failed to show up. But just a short time ago, it was again reported on Highway 99 on the outskirts of Sacramento heading north. A block has been hastily erected at the town of Woodland, which is the next town along the route of the steamer. We'll have a further report as soon as we hear from the Woodland police. How come you cut off 99 onto alternate 40, Sam? Because alternate 40 goes to Gridley and 99 doesn't. You really map this thing out, huh? Uh, Albert, I've heard a lot of derogatory things said about myself and this wonderful steamer of mine. But it's never bothered me. You know why? Because you're smart, Sam? Because I knew that one of these days a big day would come along and I'd make all those people who said all those things laugh out of the other corner of their mouths. You know what, Albert? What, Sam? That day is here. When we get into Gridley, I'll have proven that what I always said was true. Turn up the radio. See how far they've gotten back in Indianapolis. Okay. Yeah, it won't turn on. At least, well, I can't get any noise out of it. The yeah, batteries must have gone. Doggone it. Now we won't know how we made out till we get into Gridley. How much longer do you figure it'll take us, Sam? I'm, I'm getting awful tired. Uh, not too long now, Albert. Maybe 20 minutes, half an hour. Won't get there at all, Lord. I know, you... Sam. Hang on and pop. <laughs> She seems to be slowing down, Sam. I am slowing her down, Elbert. If I'm not mistaken, we should be getting into Grizzly right over the top of this hill. You mean it, Sam? You mean we're really there? We made it? I think so, Elbert. We'll know in a minute. Sure wish the radio was working so we could know how we did. Well, there'll be somebody in Grizzly with a radio. We can ask them. Yeah. Hey, Elbert, look there. Right down there at the foot of the hill. It's a town, all right, Sam. It's Grizzly, Elbert. Grizzly in the finish line for us. Hey, looks like they're having a celebration or something. 
No, the car's all right. Maybe they've heard about it. No, uh, most likely a picnic or a parade. Are you going to cross the finish line like they do back at Indianapolis? Albert, that's a great idea. We'll give them something to talk about for a long time to come. Uh-huh. Get a hold of that pump, Albert. I'm pumped. I know, Sam. I know. <laughs> They're getting out of the cars into the street. There's yeah, something funny, Albert. They've got cars parked there across the street. And they're holding up their hands. Well, I guess there's nothing to do but stop. I don't want to bust up my steamer after she run all this way. Anyway, we got the Gridley. All right. All right, you two. Now just stay where you are. Don't make no fast moves. Sam, this cop doesn't sound very friendly. That gun he's waving doesn't look very friendly either. Now, I want you both to get down out of that, that, uh... Steamer, Stanley Steamer. Yeah, well, that thing. And hey, just stand over there quiet. I better do as he says, Albert. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Albert. Yes, yeah, Sam? I can't get my hands loose to the steering wheel. They're stuck. Oh, uh, his hands are stuck to the wheel, officer. Well, get them unstuck and climb down out of there. You're both under arrest. For what? If I took the time to tell you now, we'd be here all night. Now get down. Oh, I almost forgot to ask. Uh, sir, is this Gridley? No, this is not Gridley. This is Live Oaks. Oh. Gridley's about ten miles further up the road. Oh, no, Albert, we lost. We came all this way so far so fast, and we still didn't complete the 500 miles. Gosh. Say, you got a radio in your car, officer? Of course I got a radio. Uh, can you get the station they have the Indianapolis races on? See how they finished? <clears throat> they didn't. They what? Uh, them racers back at Indianapolis, they didn't finish. They stopped the race five minutes ago. Supposed to drive 500 miles, but they got rained out. They had to stop at 475. Albert, you hear that, yeah. Albert? We beat them. Ah. We went 490 miles and they stopped at 475. Oh. I told you the Stanley Steamer was the fastest car on four oh. wheels. Yeah, yeah, now wait a minute. If you don't mind, I'll ask you to get into my car and we'll take a slower ride back to police headquarters. Oh, sure, officer. And you know something, Sam? What, Albert? At least in his car. I won't have to hang on and pump. Suspense. In which Mr. John McIntyre starred in The Big Day. Written by Sam Pierce and produced and directed by William N. Robeson. Supporting Mr. McIntyre in The Big Day were Jeanette Nolan, Joe DeSantis, William Keneally, Henry Blair, Sam Pierce, and Dawes Butler. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. <laughs> has been brought to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com. <laughs>